Hi guys, welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny, and as always, I thank you very, very much for being here. I really appreciate that you guys choose to spend a little time with me each week. Uh, this week I have a, a little talk about some tops, and I have a quick tutorial on um, fixing a serger mistake. Uh, but before I get to that, I wanted to say, um, I try not to do this too often because I find it a terrible bore, but as it's the beginning of the year um, and I've been working on taxes, etc., I had to um, add up how much money I got from uh, Google this year for the ads that run here on my YouTube channel. And my total this year was $300 with like 300 and change, which I know does not sound like a lot of money, but I will point out that it's $300 more than I made last year. So I'm actually really proud of that. Um, however, being so as yourself, you know that that $300 doesn't come anywhere close to covering the cost of the fabric or the patterns at all. Um, in an effort to make this channel a little bit more sustainable, I, uh, I, I want to keep my content free for everybody because I really like the community that we're building here. Um, and I don't like the idea of doing things on another platform or for just people who pay or something like that. Um, but you guys can help me make this a little bit more sustainable by simply um, hitting the, sus the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, hitting the like button whenever you think of it and sharing me with your friends. Um, additionally, a number of you ladies have donated to my Ko-Fi account this year, um, which is, is so generous and so lovely and um, I try to make sure I get a note to everybody who um, gives me money in the Ko-Fi account. I feel like it's just really, um, it's really touching that you guys uh, appreciate what I do. Um, and that you trust me enough to just give me money. I mean, that's, it's, it's just really, really nice. So I just want to say a, spe a special thanks to all of my um, Ko-Fi supporters from 2022. Um, that Ko-Fi button I try to leave in my notes, but I often forgot. Um, it is on my header on my um, YouTube page. But as I say, making a monetary donation is not essential. I I would really, really love it if you guys could just help me out by um, by getting my name out there a little bit more. The more people who watch my channel, the more people watch those commercials, and that's how uh, Google pays me. So, enough about that. This week, we are going to be talking about some tops. I think last week I was telling you I was uh, looking at making Simplicity 8603, which I did. I've made two of them. The cotton rayon voile one that I'm wearing right now, um, and another one. We'll get to those in a few minutes. Uh, before that, let me tell you that I made another sewing workshop swing tee. And I will show you, here's a picture of the first one I made, which is in a rayon cotton jersey, no, sorry, a rayon spandex jersey. This one I did not actually make for myself. This one was one that I made for the store where I work for a display. That one I gave... Uh, long sleeves. Then I made another one for myself and I this is a picture of it here. This one I shortened the sleeves a bit. I, I know you can't tell in this picture but I did shorten the hem also about two inches. Okay so here's what I did. I put I made this shirt and I put a contrast uh, neck binding on. And then I used the same contrast binding around the armhole right here. And as I was using my cover stitch to um, make a little stitching detail around the neckline and also to sew that edge down, um, my the seam at the back of my binding got jammed in my cover stitch machine and put a hole in the back of my shirt. <laughs> now. That's the kind of thing that happens to us all the time. So um, I have a quick little tutorial here for uh, to show you how I fixed that. And then I will come back and talk to you about a couple other shirts. So the first thing we're going to do is remove our serging. And um, there's a right side and a wrong side to your serging. You want to do this on the right side, which looks like this. I'll try to show you a picture of it. <laughs> 
Um, and on this one I used a four thread serge, so hopefully you'll be able to see. I have this line of stitching here is just my basing stitching, so try to ignore that. The serging stitching, you have two rows on a four thread. One is right here. And one is right here. This one in the middle, that when you do a four thread, that one is easier to see. The one down here at the loops gets a little confusing because it, it's hard to tell the difference between the, the straight thread and the loops. But just pull a couple until you get the one that is the straight edge, which is this one right here. Now, this is where my serging started, right here. You can see where it overlapped. So I start pulling out right here, just a little before that. And on the other side of that, I'm gonna break my threads the same way on the other side, just like that. And it doesn't, you don't have to be as careful on this side in terms of which thread you cut. You just wanna be sure that both of your straight threads are cut, okay? Then, I'm just gonna go back up here and let's find This is our fourth thread, so if you're doing a three thread, you won't need this. See how when I pull this, it pulls up this edge? That means I have the wrong thread. So, try again. It's this one right here. There we go. And I'm just going to pull that. And gently pull all the way around and it, it may break if it breaks it's fine just start over where your thread ended If you're just doing a three thread, you'll have just this one. So again, I'm going to pull that up there. And it doesn't seem to be pulling the loop threads on this edge, so I think I have the right one. Let's see. Let's give it a little pull. And it's starting to gather, so that is indeed the right one. long threads and then this the most satisfying part just grab this thread and pull it out now remember we made um, clips on either side of this join so now all you have to do is pull out that join section and usually I just do that like this And to be honest, this is longer than I usually leave it. I usually only leave it about like that much. And the reason I do that is because the join, it, the thread always breaks in the join. It, I can't, for some reason, I can't manage to pull it out of there, so. All right, so on this one, I'm gonna get rid of all these threads. And then on this one, I have, um, I did a row of stay stitching on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out too. The whole reason for undoing all this is this right here. You see this hole right here, which was on the right side of my shirt. And that was because when I tried to do a cover stitch, it got stuck in there and it was a disaster. So I am to fix that by doing this. 
you can see I haven't pressed out all of my creases here. I'm going to kind of use those. There's my hole right there. Right here is the center back of my shirt. So I am going to use this curve to just come down a little bit like this. And this it's going to end right at this, pretty much right at this crease line here from where I uh, sewed on it before. I'm going to draw this on here so you guys can see. Normally, I would probably just cut this, use the rotary cutter, and just straight out cut it. But I want you guys to see what I'm doing. So it's going to be like that. And then I'm going to pretty much go straight across until I get to that halfway mark. Then I'm just going to cut this off. This is obviously going to make my back neckline a little bit lower, but I'm not really going to worry about that because it's better than having a hole in my shirt. And then I'm just going to fold this over pretty much on that half way mark, match it up to that edge, and cut the other way, the other side right along the edge of that. So they should be pretty much the same on both sides. Okay, now we can go back and put our binding back on. Okay, so I have um, quartered my neckline again. It originally had marks, but obviously they've been cut off since it was surged off. I've made a new neck binding, and this binding, my neckline now only has a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which was what was this, which was what the surging was. My binding has a half an inch seam allowance. So I've gone all the way around the edge of my binding and very carefully marked a quarter of an inch off of the, um, the raw edges. So now I'm going to put this on here. Make sure I quartered my, yeah, I did. Okay. So this is the center back. I'm going to go ahead and match this up to the center back and I'm going to put my, I'm going to match the edge of my shirt up to that marker lining. This way, when I go to the serger, my serger will still have something to grab onto. It can serge off a quarter of an inch, but I'm not reducing the neckline any more than it already is. I'm gonna match up that one. And same thing, match it right up to that marker line. There's the center front. That's going to go here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and finish matching that up all the way around. And I'm going to go ahead and serge it on. Okay, so there's my binding back on. And I used the four thread serger and put that back on. And then I pressed my seam allowance towards the shirt. And now, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm going to attempt to do the cover stitching that I did before, which is more of like a detail cover stitching, a um, like a design detail. So I'm gonna have the inside of my shirt facing up, and I'm gonna place my uh, cover stitch needles along the edges of my serging. So one needle will go right here, and one needle will go just at this edge. It can be over a little bit, but right there. And I'm gonna go all the way around my shirt and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, and that's what the neckline looks like. That is what I was going for originally. Um, my stitching is a little wavy here, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, I really like this detail around the neckline. Uh, I think I might've liked it. It was a little bit further out. But I did want to catch that um, seam allowance, which you can see here on the inside. Not a big fan of the way that looks, but nobody will see that. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, guys, I hope you found that um, helpful. I will show you a couple more pictures of that t-shirt here. I will say, I'm not sure about this shirt. Like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this shirt. I actually really like the first version. I think maybe, I don't know if it's because I had an accident with this fabric. <laughs> 
or if I just don't like this fabric. I feel like it looks a little dumpy on me. You guys let me know what you think. Um, I might shorten it a little bit, or maybe I should just shorten the sleeves. They're supposed to be short sleeves. So I think that's what I should do is just shorten the sleeves, right? Let me know what you think. Okay. The other thing I made was Simplicity 8603, which I'm, the one I'm wearing today is the, um, this one is a, the, like I said, the cotton rayon voil, and I got this fabric from Emma One Sock. Um, I don't know if you can tell in the pictures, but now that I'm in front of the camera, you can probably see, again, I have this little problem with this poking up here. Um, I kind of knew that that was going to happen because it happens to me all the time. I just need to take the top edge, the shoulder edge of my pattern in about a quarter of an inch on the back and the front, and that usually fixes it. I did that for the second version. Um, this one, I think that's the, uh, this, I didn't do any alterations to this, and this one was view A, um, which is the v-neck, three-quarter sleeves, and just one front and one back piece. Now, my favorite make was this one. Oh, and also, you know what I'm wearing in that, in the picture with that is those Berta pants that I was talking about the last couple of weeks. I'll leave links to, obviously, to all of this stuff below. Um, the other one that I made was this one right here. And this one is, um, View C. View C has a pocket. I did, I just didn't put it on there. I could, actually, to be honest with you, I couldn't figure that pocket out. I'm not sure what the heck was going on with that, so I just eliminated it. Um, this one I made in a cotton spandex jersey that I got from, that one is from Latoff Fabrics. And you can see, I'll try to get an up close picture on this, that I did that same um, cover stitch detailing on this one and it came out really well on this particular one. Uh, and that one, I am wearing that with, that one and also the swing tee that I showed you earlier. I'm just wearing with a pair of um, Plinka, Tina Gibbons Plinka pants that I've had forever and a day. They're in a rayon Bemberg, which is a lining fabric. Um, and I just changed the hem so it doesn't have the pleats, the vertical pleats on the side and the ruffle. I eliminated all of that and I just put some horizontal pleats all the way around the hem, about four inches long, just to take the hem in a little bit. I keep thinking that I'm going to get rid of those pants because they're not my favorites, but <laughs> meanwhile, I wear them once a week, so I feel like I should just keep them. Um, okay. Since we've been talking about sergers, uh, Teresa contacted me and asked me if I change my serger thread for every project, um, do I use actual serger thread? And I think that was the, the, the crux of the question. So my answer is this. I don't change my serger thread unless I have to. I use a lot of black and white or black and off-white. I almost always use off-white, like just barely off-white because I think that, that white white is too stark for almost everything um the other colors that i have a lot of are this like uh it's almost like a light beigey color and this light gray color and i use this color for anything random like i don't sew a lot of light blue but i would use it for this i don't know if you're going to be able to see this in the picture but um i would also use it for this uh, print that has like a taupey background. This color I use for a lot of things. Um, something like this limey green. I'm not going to buy a special serger thread for that, but I can use this easily. Now, so I do usually use serger thread. However, if I have a random project like this and I really want the thread to match perfectly, I will just buy three spools of regular thread, this color, and put them on my serger for this project and then be done with it. I do it all the time. It works just fine. I have used, I think for that, I usually use Guterman just because it fits on my spindle a little better. Um, if you're going to do that, you usually have, um, I'll show you. On most sergers, you'll have something like that looks like this, this little cone thing that sits on the um, spool holder, and that holds the cone. It's about the right size for that. If you use your regular thread, and I just have a Coats and Clark here, so I'll show you. You should have something that looks sort of like that. Um, you just put this on the spool thing and put this 
on top and that usually holds it down enough now sometimes this thing if it flies off into space it's fine um I, i've used this so a, a, a gazillion times and it always it works fine um so yeah most of the time it is serger thread not always um and most of the time i have uh, either black or white on my serger and thank you so much for the question teresa um that was a good one um okay what else so since i've had a little success with my tops this week um, or last week, I have decided I want to work on a couple more, and um, I recently got a couple of patterns at the McCall's sale over at uh, the the site white sale over at um, something delightful, which is the uh, Butterick Vogue McCall's, and also Simplicity at this point here in the U.S. Uh, for everybody else, this is just Vogue pattern 1733. It is a Marcy Tilton pattern. I am going to start with view D, which is a long sleeve asymmetrical t-shirt with two different sleeves and a different neck binding, like a contrast neck binding. That's what I'm going to start with. All right, guys, that is it for me this week. Next week, we are going to be working on our sewing workshop origami skirt, which I am very excited for. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I wish you happy sewing.